Welcome, welcome. Hey, if you're tuning in with me tonight, let's do some painting. I'm excited that you're here. Uh, what's happening in your world? Hopefully you're enjoying a nice, easy breezy Thursday evening. Tonight we're going to be doing a little bit of painting. So let's talk about what we're going to be doing tonight. So tonight we're going to be painting a fortune cat or a beckoning cat or if I'm pronouncing it right, a maniki niko. Uh, I think this will be a great exercise for kids and for adults who just want to do a little bit of painting. So I'm calling this kind of a paint along, less class, more paint along. Uh, you are going to want to grab the link and I'm just throwing it in chat here. Uh, things didn't work out quite like I had hoped here. So see if you, if that reference link will work for you, you may have to adjust that, but uh, go ahead and grab that. And then let's see, what else can I tell you about this class? So of course there's a link, go ahead and catch that in the chat there. You might have to delete the first couple of digits in that, but see if you can grab it. Tonight's class hopefully will be about an hour, so we'll just do a paint along. Uh, and I'm using watercolors tonight, but if you want to use colored pencils or something or use both, you can do that too. Let's see here. And if you're new here, and if I could operate my computer, my name is Paige and I'm the Chief Pixel Pusher and Paint Brusher over at Gumption and we do these classes about three times a month here on YouTube and then also I do a, a Zoom class on Patreon with my Paint Club members. So if you're new here, that's who I am. If you want to find a regular schedule, so you can't do two things at once here today, you can go over to I have Gumption forward slash calendar and you can check out the schedule there. What else can I tell you? I think that's probably going to be what I can tell you. So if you're just tuning in and you're gonna paint along, grab the link that is in chat there. And also let me know that you're here with me tonight. I'd, I'd love for you to say hi. So you can do that in the comments or chat. What we're going to do is, this is the little cat that we are going to be painting tonight. Hopefully you can kind of see that. And I have a sheet that looks similar to this. It has the illustration of the cat that you can grab. So you may want to trace that and you might need a few moments to do that. So I'm going to let you do that. I'm gonna, we're going to have a word from our sponsor and uh, then we'll get to painting. So thanks for tuning in tonight. We'll get right after it here, after this message. Hey Gumption Gang, want to see the sticker of the month for September? Da -da 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 -da. Here it is! But wait, this is just one of two stickers that will be mailed to you. The other is a surprise. Stickers will be mailed out the first week of September. Want to join the club? It's easy. Sign up at patreon.com forward slash gumption. That's patreon.com forward slash gumption. For the price of a cup of coffee, five bucks, you can have stickers and goodies mailed to your door each month. These mobile art pieces are a wonderful way to express yourself or just give your day a boost. So keep your eyes peeled for your mail in September and I will see you later. All right, so actually I just mailed off those stickers moments ago. So if you are in the paint club or in the sticker of the month club over on Patreon, you can go ahead, you know that they're coming and they're on their way to you. All right, so we're gonna switch camera views here really quick. So you can kind of see what is happening here. And I am going to, let's see if I can share my screen here. In case you're not where you can download this, you should be able to see some of this imagery on the screen here. Let's see if we can do this. 
There we go. All right. Again, that link should be in chat here. So go ahead and grab that there. I sort of cheated and went ahead and sketched mine. So see, I'm one step ahead of you, which so sorry. <laughs> so oftentimes you'll see, this is a Japanese figurine uh, that you'll see in businesses and it's often to thought to bring good luck. And I thought that it might be really interesting to learn a little bit more about this figurine because I've seen them in different businesses and wanted to learn a little bit more about them. And in a coming class, we're going to be actually painting ramen. And I thought this might be a really fun kind of pattern to work with. So we're kind of hitting all the angles here. And as you're painting your cat, one of the things that I wanted to say about it being kind of a paint along is that you can really paint your cat any which way you would like. I'm going to throw up on the screen here a little, I did a little digital version of this kitty cat. And you can see I made it a tabby. So oftentimes they might be a white cat traditionally, but I thought, you know, we might as well make this fun. Usually they hold a little coin but I thought it'd be fun for this guy to have a little fish and you can paint your fish a number of ways, however you want. So we're just gonna have fun tonight. All right, so I'm going to make my kitty an orange tabby. So I'm gonna make it a little bit different than this one. But first I've got to mix up my paints here. So I'm going to mix up my transparent pyrrol orange. If you don't have that color, no problem. Uh, just get out a yellow and a red and you can create an orange that way. I just really love this color. This is a core color um, and it's just so, switch the screen out just a minute. So you can see how very vibrant this is. It is gorgeous. So I'm mixing some of that. If you have, uh, like for this tail of this guy, I have some a sodalite or a Payne's gray color. So if you have one of those colors, you can mix it. I'm just getting my colors ready. So they're ready when I start painting here. Might be too much water. And of course, I need to have a bit of my opera pink in here because any chance that I can use a hot pink or opera pink, I'm here for it. And if you are live with me tonight and you need me to give you a little bit more time, just let me know uh, and I can wait a minute or two. Okay. I might just grab a little bit of yellow. This is a medium cad yellow. So it's less lemony, kind of more like egg yolk colored. All right. We'll also want a little bit, I'm using a little bit of ultramarine blue and I water it down quite a bit. Just to do a nice kind of light blue on this cat a little bit. I like to give it some kind of tone so it's not just stark white that has a little bit of value that can be created there. Let's see. Let's lift this up a little bit so you can kind of have a better view 
here. Okay, so hopefully by now you have your sketch ready. I'm going to use my kneaded eraser to lighten up my sketch marks here. Throw this up on the screen kind of when I'm doing that. There we go, in case you need that. Just rolling my eraser softly over my drawing so it'll lightly pick up some of this excess lead. Some folks don't like uh, pencil marks in their paintings. Some don't care. I just don't want to be dragging lead around. So I kind of try to lift it a little. We are streaming live on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube tonight. So if you're tuning in from one of those places, let me know where you're tuning in from. And if you're new. Okay. All right. So first things first, I'm going to actually approach this with this light blue with a bigger brush. Hopefully you can kind of see this here. And I just kind of shaping these areas a little bit to give us some value. So along underneath the arm here. And kind of underneath this area here. Because we'd have kind of more of a, a darker area where there's a shadow, which we will put more shadows in. here and along the tail zoom in here a little bit so I know I talked about it last week but uh, have you watched the Bob Ross um, documentary I thought it was really interesting and touching but uh really kind of interesting to watch putting a little bit of this blue kind of underneath there and along the body here i may need a paper towel But you can see that's a really light, subtle blue here. Okay. And you may need a minute or two for that to dry. We'll kind of let that dry. And actually, while that's happening, I'll paint the gold ball on it's the little bell that's on this cat. So from the yellow that we mixed up here. So Laurel says she hasn't had a chance to watch the Bob Ross documentary yet. Uh, like I said last week, it totally made me tear up. So be forewarned. 
It may not ha hit everybody that way, but it, it did me. He's a pretty cool guy. Okay, and here I'm lifting just a little bit of that yellow to give this a little bit of light. So I will let that hang. And then, all right, I think we can move on here. How do we want to proceed? Okay, so I think I'm going to start with some pink areas here because uh, I can hit these while other parts are drying. And we can kind of do two birds, one stone. So let's zoom out here a little bit. So I've put a little extra water in with this pink to do some soft uh, color. This might even be a little too pink for me. So I'm just going to do rosy cheeks for this cat. And you can kind of choose to do that if you want or not. Of course, this cat's going to have a pink nose, but depending on the kind of cat you have, your cat might have a dark nose. And we're going to have some pink in the ears here. Okay. So I think for this guy, we are going to make him a bit of a tabby, but I'm going to see if I can just do some light painting of this orange color. Like you can see in this one, it's real subtle. I'm going to try to mimic that a little bit. And so that might be really, that's less subtle than I would hope. But what I can do is dip my brush in water, kind of tap it, and then soften this edge here. And if I need to, I can tap on my paper towel and still even lift more. Remember, usually uh, watercolor, it dries lighter. So there's always that balance of enough water versus pigment. And sometimes, you know, it just takes a while to get there where you're comfortable with that. So all of these kind of areas here, I'm just going to add some subtle color. For his feet or her feet. Again, your cat could be purple if you really wanted. Kind of along the top here. Whoops, got into the pink there, so we are going to have a little bleed, but that's okay. Sometimes those colors that kind of bleed together are kind of fun. I'm going to kind of do along the body here. I 
And of course, we want to hit the tail. Of course, if there is anything that you would like to see us paint here, I am all ears or eyeballs, as it might be. I'm just leaving a little extra. It's kind of where the bead is living is up here in this tip of the ear. Kind of see how that settles there. Maybe just a little orange here on the paw. So while that kind of dry, dries, I can kind of go in here and I've lost some of this little fish's details. And again, I'm just showing you these for reference in case it helps you with any ideas that you might have of how you might want to uh, paint your fish, pick your colors that you like, or you can stay within this orangey pink kind of realm. Uh, you can see this little fish is a lot more orange than these two. But I think I'm probably going to use this uh, fish color to uh, inform this fish here. So while I'm kind of letting other parts dry, I'm going to use my same orange here, diluted down. And kind of just start in on the fish too so we can have a base color set down and then we can start doing more details if we want. So by now, lots of kids are back in school. If you have kids, uh, how are they faring in their first weeks of school? Hopefully they're enjoying it. It's probably nice to get back into a routine with their friends. Of course, I'm never going to miss an opportunity to put in my pink. So I'm going to put a little pink here. And maybe a little pink here for, you know, might be a fish uh, cheek there. Real subtle color to start. 
And that is really something to practice as you're uh, learning to paint is trying to get to know your paints a little bit and doing a little subtle color. So I'm going to let the fish dry a little bit. I think we can want to make sure I do the collar. So maybe do the collar next. You can pick a red or an orange or a blue. I might use, um, what am I going to use? I think I'm going to use some sort of blue color. Maybe a teal or a turquoise color. Or you can just use your um, ultramarine blue that you have out already. Normally these cats, I think they have a red collar, but your cat doesn't have to. But because I have so much orange and gold and pink, I'm going to offset it a little. Have a nice, really small brush, as you can see here can fit into some of these tight spaces. These brushes are made by Trakel Art Supplies. And I don't know that they have this specific uh, color option anymore, but they have a lot of different brushes that suit all kinds of mediums. And they don't pay me, but I do like their panels and their products quite a bit. So. And I like to promote people I like. So for now, that's probably going to be okay. I can let that dry and my little fish is going to dry and we can start seeing where we need to add more color to our little cat. And if we want to add stripes, we can do that now. I see that I missed kind of some orange over here. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange to this arm. And some, you know, just subtle colors, places that you, where you want to put them. Kind of down at the mouth in the chin and we can start putting in some some details like stripes and the like on our kitty so I know that I'm gonna have stripes in his tail or her tail so I'm just kinda you can kind of curve around the tail And if you have to kind of paint a, a little bit of a line there, that's okay. I'm never going to pronounce this right, but I'm going to say, I'm going to try. Hi, hi, and woman. Uh, hello, and thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm glad that you're here with us tonight and thanks for saying hello. If you want to go ahead and grab the link that is in the description there, you're welcome to paint along with us or paint at a time that works for you. That's what's great about these classes. You can go back and rewash them if you want. And sometimes I'll tell you, you know, don't ever be afraid to use reference uh, when you're looking at cats. If you need ideas on what their markings look like, feel free to pull up Google or, you know, your phone if you need to and uh, check out their markings if you if you need to do that. I'm going to give this kitty cat some eyebrows. I 
I'm using a, I think this is a size, this is a size two. This is a brush that I got with some paints from Beam Paints. It's a nice, kind of a nice small size because as you can see, I'm working pretty small tonight. The point is just to have fun and make your cat your own. You can give your, your little cat some tufts if you need to. Just have fun with it. And you can kind of, you know, use your brush as like a, a pencil where you can do these little marks this way. Again, if you need if you're needing a little help curving around a curved area, you can kind of draw a line like this and then just use that as your guide. I think we could do this on this arm too. We have a little calico cat, so she's got red and black and gray coloring. So she's kind of fun because she has all the stripes and then she is a little bit brindle-ish too. And she is a character. So this is kind of fun. What do you think, guys? If you need to go back in, so one of the things that I really enjoy about uh, watercolor is the layering process that so you can see here. I'm just gonna use this as an example. I have a really nice, you know, even tone here. But if you wanted to go back in and create more texture, great thing about watercolor is that you can layer it. So like if you were doing wood grain or something, uh, this is a great way to you create wood grain. It's just kind of by glazing and going back over that area or creating some shadow there. You can do that. 
Oh, I better get the foot here too. Okay. I better get the tip of the tail here. Of course, this is what I call the bead. I'm going to zoom in here really quick where water pools and this, of course, is going to be a darker area. And when you're moving the bead, of course, if you want an even um, tone all the way around, you move that bead throughout whatever you're filling it with. But wherever that pools, it's going to be the darkest part of your watercolor. Guess I better do. the paws here. Okay, so anything now at this stage that you might want to darken for the cat, that could be um, this, uh, the collar or anything. Now is a good time to do that, which I'm going to do that myself because it's dry. So I'm letting the other items dry. I'm gonna go back in. There's a little bit more pigment here. And what I can do is by using this same color, uh, let's see if this will focus a little bit better. Same color, but just another layer over the top of this, I can put a bit of a shadow here, or it will create a bit of a shadow feel. Is that focusing very well here? And then I can do the same with my, my bell here. I can add another layer of this yellow. You could even tap a little bit of orange in there if you want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start I'm going to use my um, sodalite or what you might think of as a Payne's gray color and add in some of the details like the eyes here. What happened to my great brush? So this is a, I really think this is kind of an oil painting brush, but uh, because it is so long, but I really like this really small, um, small brush here because it's nice for details so you can see this is where the brush comes from and the size that it is okay so i have my sodalite or my dark color you could use black you could use paints gray um whatever kind of dark color you might have I like to test it out to to see how how dark that really is it's always good to, especially as you're learning, to test your watercolor. And don't be afraid to move your watercolor around if you need to. So I'm just gonna paint in these eyes. Here. And this is something that you could just keep working on 
and having fun with. On the downloadable sheet there, there are two of these for you to download. So you could do more than one. Sometimes the second one is better than the first one. So if you like to practice painting, then you can do that as well. So I'm just painting in the whiskers here and maybe the mouth area. Little tiny brush. So as we're painting along, I know that you're busy painting, but if you had questions, you could always throw them in chat there. So I'm feeling like our little cat here is doing pretty good. I think we can move on to our uh, little fish. And like I said, I mean, the fish is wide open. You can really do whatever, um, whatever you like. You can see I've used two different color combos here. I'm thinking that these studies, I'm actually gonna be using them for a pattern, but that maybe some of my people who are in my sticker of the month club um, or pink club, because you're automatically in the sticker of the month club, might need these as a little surprise in there with their stickers. What do you think? Those are really fun to paint and uh, I think they might make a really fun little extra. Okay, so I'm going to fashion my little fish after this fish. And really what I did for this is I just kind of layer in colors over the top of one another. Let's see, maybe I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on. There we go. Sometimes the paint sort of dictates how things are gonna go. But we've got a little fin here, so I'm gonna add some pink there. Just softly kind of softening out some of this color so I can add other colors. Add a little yellow in here. It's just kind of fun when colors mix and they work really nicely into one another. So Laurel said would love it. I'm assuming that she's talking about receiving one of the little mini paintings there for sticker club. So that's that's good to know. I wanted sticker of the month club to be kind of a fun, you get a sticker, but maybe you get something else that you didn't expect. You, with what you can do with that and you can give it away or put it in a frame or use it as a guide. So I'm using a little bit of this yellow just I guess because I'm feeling a little bit yellow here so and you can see I'm just subtly kind of layering this in I that's how I love to use these paints is to create some subtle color and shaping here a little bit and then we can go in for our big blotches of color. And you always, I don't care who you are, you always get a hair, a cat hair or human hair or lint.
get the little lips here so tiny so you really have to have a little brush for this one but I also have some gold paint that might be kind of fun to incorporate with this uh, fish and cat I can tell you here, you know, as I'm putting this color next to the paw, it helps define this paw a little bit more because there are some white areas there in the paw. So sometimes as you're working along, keep that in mind when you're drawing and, and stuff. Just have fun with it. And this would have a little bit of a shadow, so whatever color this really winds up being, it should be a little bit darker back there. And this, of course, on this side, you'd have a little more shadow, I think, next to the cat. But we've laid down some good color here. I'm going to do a little bit more in the face area, just lightly. You can even define this snouty part if you want. And for that matter, you could do it on the cat as well, the side of the nose. Oops, I got some darker color in there. Okay. So, let's see how wet that face really is. Let that dry a little bit. Then what we can do is start adding kind of these uh, blobs of darker color, or spots, I should say. Koi fish are so pretty. So I've deemed this little fish a koi fish. I don't know if that's traditionally used with these special cats, but it's how, how I'm using them. And just add little spot areas where you want. Of course, you can always Google these fish to see, you know, the different color combos that they come in. Some are yellow and some are orange and some are kind of a combination of orange and a dark color. I'm going to put one of these on his fin too. This little flipper here. And then I can go in with a darker color. My soda light color. You could use your paints gray or a dark black color. So this one I might need a little more pigment in my brush there. And you'll want to pull any extra hairs that you have out of your brush so you're not dragging that into a space that you don't intend to.
I'll kind of fake this thin area a little bit. So I'm kind of using my spots to, again, define this arm of the cat there. You might have to tap in a little bit of more dark if it's not dark enough for you here. So I think now I'm going to actually put in the eyes because... It looks really weird without the eyes. Again, I'm using the sodalite color with a really thin brush. You kind of always want to make sure with these little brushes that you tap off your brush and kind of wipe off the ferrule a little bit so you don't get an unexpected dollop on your painting. So this is the ferrule here. I see that it wasn't on the camera and you can just kind of wipe it off there. At least it gives you a fighting chance so you don't you're not getting paint where you don't want it. Okay. So now you can kind of see that he's looking here. Up at the cat. And you can go in for your little details now if you want to, which would be like maybe I want to do some lines over the fins. Maybe you can't see that. Let's try to zoom in a little bit. There you go. You can see that. And then, you know, on this fin here. That's pretty light, so I might need to add a little. That looks awfully dark there, but I can lift it a little bit here. And you can also uh, draw in the scales with a small brush uh, if you want to. So that's kind of nice about starting with these lighter colors. You can kind of draw in these scales. Those might be super bright, but we'll see kind of see how they dry here. Because the scales are kind of fun. Just kind of this U 
shape and you can just build off of each of these. going to add a little bit more of this hot pink because I want to define this cat arm a little bit more. So maybe I can do a, a spot of hot pink. And then we're going to put some shadows in here as well. But you can keep adding details to your, your lucky cat and fish here. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You can see between, um, let's see between the two cats here on the screen, as well as our, little animation here uh, right above my hand here. You can use all kinds of different possibilities. Of course, for the gray tabby there, it makes the fish really stand out, uh, much like this white one. So keep that in mind. Depends on where you want your focus to be or what your favorite kind of cat is here. Okay, so let's add some shadows so we can have this kitty cat grounded always helps with a little bit of depth. You can see we have some good shading and shadow in here for this cat that we're just going to add to this cat that will give it just a little bit more depth there. And I may have to do a couple, a couple of layers of this. But what I'll start with first is I'm going to go underneath here where the cat is sitting. This is ultramarine blue that I'm using. Just to kind of ground the kitty cat. If you need to soften the edge, you can do that here by tapping off your brush on a paper towel and then tapping in that area. And I think I might try to we'll see how this looks here. Okay. So that helps kind of ground this cat a little bit. We can also do this underneath the paw here. Again, this kind of helps to find and differentiate this paw. And the fish here. And I can what I can do is I'm dipping my brush in water, then I tap it here, and then I go onto this edge. And I can scumble kind of back and forth here, which will soften that so you don't have a hard edge there. It's more of a gradual process there. So this helps give this cat some depth. So again, I'm going to go underneath this paw. I'm going to soften that edge a little. and kind of carry that down here. You can even do that here underneath the arm a little.
And frankly, you could actually do it over the fish here if this area is dry, which mine isn't entirely dry. But you would have a shadow there too. And I think I'm going to add just a little under here. Because it's kind of fun. Now if you wanted to even have a darker color there you could too in the shadow so maybe the cast shadow directly underneath the tail might be even darker there. So I'm just using that soda light color, or you could use a Payne's gray color here for that. You could even add the little legs there. Not sure how I feel about that part. But you get the idea. And if you're really extra, I have this great uh, gold paint. I think you can see it in the camera here. That is a beam paint. But you can also, I think Holbein has uh, gold paints. A lot of... Um, other brands, I think, carry gold paints. But wherever you might, maybe you want to put it on your fish. Or on your, your little cat bell. You can do that, so I can show you. Maybe you can see the gold. Maybe not so much. You can see where it's wet there, but just play with it and have fun. And then when we do our ramen class, I haven't quite decided if that's going to be um, a class that's on YouTube or if it's going to be a Zoom class specifically yet. Um, but I think it'd be fun to put all of these kind of together. And maybe, I don't know, you guys can tell me how you feel about it. If you think maybe you'd like to learn how to do a little bit of make your own pattern, maybe with Procreate or... Uh, Illustrator, I think Procreate might be a little more accessible for um, people, but it is a an iPad app, so maybe not. You'd have to tell me, but it'd be kind of fun. So now is a great time to throw questions in chat or comments that you might have, maybe some ideas on future classes that you'd like to see. Or if you struggled with something in this class, you could throw it in chat or in the comments down below. Again, if you tuned in late for this class and you uh, want to paint along with us, you can just download that link that's in the description or in the comments there.
and you can paint at a later time if you want. Yeah, so Laurel, let me know if you do uh, do that and you are able to uh, get that on the school iPad. I think you'd really like it. And it's a very affordable app uh, if the school doesn't um, download it. I think I want to say, I, I know this and I've probably forgotten. I think it's about $10 forever. So they don't charge you a monthly subscription fee. It's just a one-time purchase and they're updating Procreate all the time. So it's, it's really a robust program. And honestly, I love it more than I ever would Photoshop just because it's so convenient and handy and they've really made it user friendly. And what's really cool, you guys, just so you know, this little cat where my hand is here, this guy, I illustrated and created this animation on Procreate. So really the um, opportunities are kind of endless with Procreate. It's just a great fun tool and I think kids would really love it. Of course, I am for, um, let's see if I can get back here. For the Art Center, I'm actually creating a whole series of classes that are dedicated to starting digital arting with the iPad. Uh, there are some other tools that are also, I just found out about one, I can't think of the name right now, I'll, I'll get it for you guys, but you can draw in the web browser. And it's very much like Photoshop or Procreate as well, but you just have to have a web browser. And so there are, I mean, technology right now is so cool with digital painting tools, it's incredible. but. When I get those classes, I have one class up over at the Pocatello Art Center. It's free. And if you go to their YouTube channel, you can watch it. And it's an informational piece about different programs that you can use to create digital art. So if you go over to the Pocatello Art Center um, on YouTube, you can check that out. And then as I finish those classes, because I have some really fun classes set up for this. We're going to be making a zine and doing a little bit of illustration of that zine. So it's a great, it's going to be a great class for kids and adults alike, just to get you started with digital tools if you've ever been curious. So stay tuned for that. Keep your eyes peeled. Um, and I'll definitely be telling you when those classes are available here. But I'm hoping that this month I can at least get two of them done uh, that will really get you started on the assignment there over there. So and of course, if you're in the Pocatello area, um, you know, the Art Center is a great resource for our community. But if not, there are lots of things online over there, too, that you can check out as well. All right. So if you have any questions, throw them in chat. I hope you enjoyed this class. You'll have to let me know if you liked painting the beckoning cat, the fortune cat. I had a lot of fun illustrating him, so... Okay, so as we're wrapping up here, let's see, do we have any comments? Not yet. If you want to learn more about me or you have questions, you can definitely throw them in chat in the comments below, even after this is aired, and I can get back to you and answer those. If you want to learn about more about me, you can go to IHaveGumption.com and check out the website there. I've got a bunch of fun stickers and t-shirts there too, if that's your jam. Uh, of course, you can just check out the calendar and see when classes are. I really am trying to be good about posting over there in the calendar so you know what's happening. If you want to be part of Sticker of the Month Club or you're interested in having that one-on-one -on -one Zoom class that we have once a month over there, you can check out patreon.com forward slash gumption. And a big thanks to my patrons uh, that help make this class possible. Uh, I have my Sticker of the Month Club folks up as well as my Paint Club. So of course, Colin and Laurel are always here painting with me and I appreciate you guys. Um, thanks for making this happen.
And if you have any interest and you like watching uh, this class and you thought it was useful for you, feel free to hit the bell and subscribe to these classes. They'll let you know when I'm going live. Uh, it's usually every Thursday at 7 unless we're over in Patreon. So, yeah. So I don't see any new comments, so I think I'm going to let you go for the evening. But I really appreciate you hanging out with me. And uh, as always, I hope you have a great weekend. And just keep painting. Thanks, Laurel. Thank you so much. Keep painting. Keep creating. Uh, if at first you don't succeed, just keep painting. You'll get it. And uh, watercolor painting is a great soother of the soul. So, all right. I will see you later. Take care.